Hello everyone. Today we are going to do a problem based on influence line diagrams. Let us read the question one time. For the beam shown in the figure, draw the influence lines for the following. Support reaction at A, support reaction at B, support reaction at C, shear force and bending moment at E, shear force to the right of B, moment at B, and shear force at D. In this beam, in the point D, there is an internal hinge. First, we are going to draw the influence line diagrams for the reactions. Initially, let us keep the unit load between A and D at a distance of X from the point A. In the point D, there is an internal hinge. So, in the point D, the moment will be zero. In this case, we can take a moment about D and find RA. RA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 4. So for RA, the unit load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the unit load, we have to take this distance. This distance is 4 minus x. For RA, we will get 4 minus x upon 4. In the point A, x will be 0. Here, instead of x, we can apply 0. In this way, for RA, we will get 1. In the point D, x will be 4. So, for RA, we will get 0. When the unit load moves from D to C, RA will be 0. From the point D, we can split the beam into two parts. On the left of D, we will have vertical reaction RD. It would be acting upwards. On the right of D also, we will have RD. It would be acting downwards. Both of the values of RD will be same. In the beam, on the left of the hinge, we can apply this rule and find this RD. RA and RD are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. The unit load is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For RD, we will get X upon 4. Now from D, we can take a moment about C and find RB. X upon 4 is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, so that it will be negative and the distance is 11. RB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 8. For RB, we will get 11x upon 32. In the point A, x will be 0. So RB also will be 0. In the point D, x will be 4. So RB will be 1.375. Now on the right of D, we can apply this rule and find RC. RB and RC are acting upwards. So both of them are positive. This is acting downwards. So it will be negative. For RC, we will get a negative value. That means the assumed direction is incorrect. We have to change the direction. Here I have changed the direction. In the point A, X will be 0. So, RC also will be 0. In the point D, X will be 4. So, RC will be minus 0 0.375. Now, let us keep the unit load between D and C at a distance of X from A. When the unit load is in DBC, RD will be 0. In this case, RA also will be 0. We know this already. To find RB, let us take a moment about C. RB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 8. The unit load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the unit load, we have to take this distance. This distance is 15 minus x. For RB, we will get 15 minus x upon 8. 
in the point D, x will be 4. For R, B, B will get 1.375. We have seen this already. In the point B, x will be 7. So, R, B will be 1. In the point C, x will be 15. R, B will be 0. Now, let us apply this rule and find R, C. R, B and R, C are acting upwards. So, both of them are positive. The unit load is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For RC, we will get x minus 7 upon 8. At D, x will be 4 and RC will be minus 0 0.375. In the point B, x will be 7 and RC will be 0. In the point C, x will be 15 and RC will be 1. This is the ILD for RA. This is the ILD for RB and this is the ILD for RC. Now we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force in the point E. The point E is located at a distance of 2 meter from the point B. First let us keep the unit load between A and D. To find the shear force in the point E, we can use left hand side rule, upwards negative and downwards will be positive. Up to the point E, we have only RC, it is acting downwards so that it will be positive. In the point A, X will be 0, so FE will be 0. In the point D, X will be 4, so FE will be 0 0.375. Now let us keep the unit load between b and e up to the point e we have only rc it is acting upwards so that it will be negative in the point b x will be 7 so fe will be 0 in the point e x will be 9 so fe will be minus 0 0.25 now let us keep the unit load between e and c now we can use right hand side rule up to the point E, we have only RB, it is acting upwards so that it will be positive. In the point E, X will be 9, so FE will be 0 0.75. And in the point C, X will be 15 and FE will be 0. Using these values, we can draw the ILD for the shear force. In the point E, we have found two values. One is to the left of E and one is to the right of E. Here you can see the ILD for FE. Now we are going to draw the ILD for the moment at E. First let us keep the unit load between A and D. To find the moment in the point E, we can use left hand side rule. RC is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 8 to minus 2 so it will be 6. At A X will be 0 so ME also will be 0. At D X will be 4 so ME will be minus 2.25. Now let us keep the unit load between B and E. RC is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6 at p x will be 7 so me will be 0 at e x will be 9 so me will be 1.5 now let us keep the unit load between e and c we can use the right hand side rule r b is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 2. In the point E, X will be 9, so ME will be 1.5. In the point C, X will be 15, and ME will be 0. Using these, we can draw the ILD for ME. Now, we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force to the right of B. First, let us keep the unit load between A and D. To find the shear force to the right of B, 
we can use left hand side rule or c is acting downwards so that it will be positive in the point a fbr will be zero in the point d fbr will be 0 0.375 now let us keep the unit to load between d and b or c is acting upwards so that it will be negative in the point d fbr will be 0 0.375 and in the point to B, it will be 0. Now let us keep the unit to load between B and C. Or C is acting upwards so that it will be negative. The unit to load is acting downwards so that it will be positive. In the point to B, X will be 7 and FBR will be 1. In the point to C, X will be 15 and FBR will be 0. Using these values, we can draw the ILD for the shear force to the right of B. Now we are going to draw the ILD for the movement at B. First, let us keep the unit load between A and D. To find the movement in the point B, we can use the left hand side rule. RC is acting in the clockwise direction. So that it will be negative and the distance is 8. When the unit load is in the point A, X will be 0 and MB is also 0. When the unit load is in the point D, MB will be minus 3. Now let us keep the unit load between D and B. To find MB, we can use the right hand side rule. The unit load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We have to take this distance. This distance is 7 minus x. When the unit load is at D, MB will be minus 3 and at B, MB will be 0. When the unit load moves from B to C, MB will be 0. Using these, we can draw the ILD for MP. We are going to draw the ILD for the shear force at D. First, let us keep the unit load between A and D. To find the shear in the point D, we can use right hand side rule. VA is acting upwards so that it will be positive. The unit load is acting downwards so it will be negative. In the point A, X will be 0 and FD also will be 0. At D, X will be 4 and FD will be minus 1. When the unit load is in DBC, FD will be 0. This is the ILD for FD. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.